So good morning, evening to all the audience who have joined the webinar today from all across. We welcome all of you to the second part of the algo trading projects. So the main purpose of uh, doing this session is to showcase wonderful projects not done by the faculty members, not done by the quantity experts, no one from the content team, but by the EPAT students and learners who come from various educational and professional backgrounds. Doing a live project is one of the essential steps and I would also like to call it as an opportunity that every student in EPAT has. Project-based learning is proven to be one of the most effective ways to provide practical applications. So for, uh, if so for if efficiently completing the project, the participant in EPAC is supported with definitely from the learnings that he gets from the EPAC program. He gets a push from the support team so that they don't forget about the objectives of joining the EPAC. Mentors from the specific domain who are experts in that field. But the most important actually is the time, commitment, and passion that is shown from the students end to complete the project. And also the choices that the student have to select any project in the quant and algo domain. So we will get started now. Uh, we have today Bala and Mark who will showcase their uh, projects. Both are accomplished individuals from the same batch, that is batch 42. They are EPAT Certificate of Excellence holders and became alumni in October 2019. Uh, we will now uh, uh, have Mark who will share about his project. Okay. But uh, before he does that, something about Mark. Okay, uh, uh, his full name is Mark Pandel. He's uh, he's an engineering fellow at a U.S. Fortune 500 company based in Houston. His focus is on complex problem solving, uh, decision quality, and integrated planning. He holds a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and a master's masters in business administration. He has 20 plus experience of algorithmic trading experience. Uh, Mark, I will now hand over the uh, uh, session to you, just uh, giving you the presenter, right? Well, hi guys, I, uh, I hope you're doing well today and thank you, Ajit, for the introduction and also to Quantinsty for the invitation to share the project I completed as part of the EPAP program. I just have, uh, one slide today that I'll talk to, and it will be in general in nature, and I'll address the agenda items suggested by Quantinsty, which are shown here on the slide. Before I start though, the, the project I selected was to build a Python-based platform that would allow me to test the performance of different strategies on portfolios of stocks, and the data for the analysis was to be downloaded from interactive brokers. Uh, the objective was not to demonstrate the efficacy of any particular strategy or financial concept, rather it was to provide a framework upon which I could build into the future. So this talk um, is of a general nature and focuses more on the learning journey rather than offering up any money-making strategy insights. So my sincere apologies for that in advance. So starting with the first question, what was the motivation for the project? And I guess I'll take a step back. Um, and the more appropriate question for me is what invoke, uh, and I guess for yourselves, is what motivated me to enroll in the EPAP program? <clears throat> uh, I've actually been trading algorithmically now for um, some 20 years using TradeStation, which, by the way, is a, is a, is a fantastic platform. My, my approach is to trade various strategies on portfolios of both long 
and short positions to provide some diversity and also to attempt to smooth the equity curve. Now, one of the limitations, however, is that TradeStation only provides access to the US markets. Certainly, if you're based in, in the US, you can only access US markets. So the trading of portfolios from different countries as a way to further diversify and manage the equity curve, that, that, that just isn't possible. But that said, I also had an account with Interactive Brokers for discretionary trading and was impressed by their global market access um, and also noted they had the capacity for trading automation via a range of different languages. The barrier for me, and this was a big barrier, is I really had no idea whatsoever how to migrate my trade, stra trade station strategies over to interactive brokers and then automate the execution. So the first question for me was, you know, which, which programming language to use? And after quite a bit of research and reading, I landed on, thankfully, I landed on Python. And then given I had no experience with Python whatsoever, the second question was, who could offer the best training? And again, after a little research, I located and landed on the EPAP program. And that certainly, that certainly ticked the Python box, um, but it also offers a very, very broad curriculum, which if you're looking to trade professionally, is you know, incredibly useful. So four, four months into EPAP, my choice for a project was fairly easy, um, which was my starting objective, develop a platform, to connect with interactive brokers using iBridge Pi and test the performance of various strategies on stock portfolios with a longer term goal of being able to code and test my trade, straight, trade station strategies and integrate them into the platform and deploy them for live trading. So that was the, um, that was the motivation. So in terms of the approach, um, For me, this was this was quite a daunting task. Um, as before starting EPAP, as I mentioned, I had no previous exposure to Python, and four months in, the, the, the concepts were all still rather vague. So my first step was to revisit the extensive material offered as part of the, the EPAP course, especially as it relates to, to Python. Um, then also understand the trading strategy examples provided as part of the EPAP course, but also search out um, the, the trading strategies available online. And if you do a, a web search, you, you'll find a, um, an inordinate number of Python codes for various different strategies you can cut and paste and begin to play with. So that was the, that was the, the, the first step. And then for the purpose of this project, I used a, a fairly simplistic strategy to build out the platform. Firstly, daily data for a single stop was downloaded from Yahoo Finance. Uh, a buy signal was generated when the price fell below the lower Bollinger Band, and a corresponding sell signal generated when the price rose back up above the simple MA. And conversely, a short signal was generated when the price exceeded the upper BB, and a cover signal when the price fell back below the same simple MA. The daily and annual returns were then calculated, um, and the, the, the top right plot there shows the strategy, shows the, um, the candlestick stock prices, the, the Bollinger Bands, and then the lower, the, the lower uh, subplot shows the, when the positions are, just long here, when the positions are actually open. I then downloaded further data from Yahoo, set up a list of tickers to use as a portfolio of long positions, and coded a loop to generate the buy sell signals and then calculate the PL for each position and also the PL for the overall portfolio. The next step was to uh, connect with interactive brokers to download the stock data rather than downloading it from Yahoo. For this, I installed iBridge Pi to serve as the bridge between the Python console and the interactive brokers interface. And with that installed, I then set up a paper trading account with interactive brokers, set up the required data subscriptions, and then reran the strategy to test the, the, the functionality. And I will say the EPAT lecture material from Dr. Liu, who is the, the, the author of iBridge Pi, was 
uh, was very, very useful here. So once that was running successfully, um, I updated the strategy to loop through a portfolio of short positions as well as the long portfolio. And with all that running well, then prepared some simple analytics to evaluate the performance of the strategy and the portfolio, which we can see to the right here. The first, the first row shows the cumulative P&L for the trading period for the individual stocks. The first shows the stocks within the long portfolio, the middle, the short portfolio, and the right is the long and short poly, short, long and short uh, positions combined. The second row shows the overall QM PL for the portfolios. Again, the first is for the long, the middle for the short, and the right for the overall portfolio. Now, a key issue with deploying strategies that trade intermittently on a portfolio of positions is to ensure your account size is neither over nor under leveraged over time. So the lower graph plots out the capital deployed for trading the long, short, and overall portfolios, and can certainly be used to, uh, to set your position size for each of the stocks, so you can um, be compliant with whatever leverage objectives you set yourself. So what were the challenges um, that I faced while doing the project? I guess for me, the, the primary challenge was the lack of proficiency in Python, although this project did drag me kicking and screaming up the learning curve. I found iBridge Pi and Interactive Brokers quite fiddly at the start to, to get running, at least certainly relative to TradeStation, which is, which is very robust. But once set up and once you know what you're doing, um, the iBridge Pi and Interactive Brokers interface uh, works like a dream. So how did I overcome the challenges? It, I, I guess for me, I mean, I've always been incredibly passionate about trading. Um, and you know, I think it takes unbridled perseverance, uh, certainly for me, as the learning curve, as I highlighted, was very strict, steep. And uh, you know, it's at times immensely frustrating. Uh, the EPAT faculty were you know, incredibly helpful when I was hitting dead ends. And also I, the iBridge Pi have a good community as well and you know, have a very robust suite of online documentation, which was also key to successfully uh, linking into the interactive brokers um, site. So thanks, guys, for your, your help and support. That's, that's greatly appreciated. Um, so what were the learnings for the project? You know, that, that, that's a great question. Um, for me, despite the rocky start, um, you know, I've been, I've been programming extensively for the last year now. Um, so, so this project gave me a very good start and I now feel very, very confident working with Python and the ver various different tools uh, within that ecosystem. So that's certainly a win for me and a very important skill that I've acquired. On, on a more personal note, given the challenging start, I think the journeys highlight, highlighted the importance of setting goals, staying focused, and playing the long game. Um, and, and I think these were certainly very effective in helping overcome you know, significant short-term barriers and, and frustrations that, that, that I went through at the start. Um, so next steps. Uh, I guess it's been over a year now since I completed the project, and and I've certainly been, as I mentioned, very very busy and completed many of the uh, the planned post project next steps. Initially, initially I focused initially I focused on coding the the trade st station strategies into Python and use those to replace the Bollinger Band strategy I described for this project. Arguably, the most challenging aspect was replicating the suite of trade management features. Um, what could be achieved in TradeStation with 50 lines of code using their inbuilt in trade management fun functions took well north of a thousand lines of code in Python. Um, so, you know, that was, that was certainly good to get that, that coded and, and working. I then built a module to send orders to the interactive brokers trading desk. 
then tested those using their paper trading account, which which is is great by the way. And then once that was working well, the strategies were deployed live in the market, and and thankfully they're continuing to perform well today. With that done, um, all all in, it was probably well north of a thousand five hundred lines of code just on on one uh, one screen. So with that done, I began streamlining the code into functions so the primary program could be read on on one screen. And, and certainly this was well worth the effort as it made the code more robust, easier to manage and then change and import and export between different strategies. Um, I've then updated the, uh, upgraded the code to use intraday, um, intraday data and then loop through different portfolios for different time periods and then combine the results to evaluate longer term performance. So as we begin to wrap up, um, you know, building on the framework um, I developed as part of the project, I've now got a very powerful platform to evaluate the efficacy of different entry signals, uh, trade management strategies applied to different portfolios on varying time frames with extended data sets. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking back decades um, to test, the, test these various aspects, which of course is an invaluable invaluable part of understanding your edge and then getting comfortable with uh, deploying before you deploy a strategy live into the marketplace. So current and near-term projects now um, include the integration of machine learning into the platform, uh, the use of dynamic portfolios where the stocks available to trade are ranked real time, and varying entry and trade management signals with market conditions. So that's that's all I had to share really, um, and I think I'm getting close to out of time. So I'll wrap by again thanking Quantinsky for en enabling what has been a prolific uh, journey of learning and for the opportunity to share my experience and the project with you today. So with that, thank you very much and uh, questions. Sure, Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much for being a part of this journey with us and uh, a great uh, session from your end. And uh, thank you for sharing the learnings with us. Uh, I will now uh, just uh, have a couple of questions asked from the audience here. Uh, so uh, first question would be, uh, uh, as an ex uh, as an experienced trader, what type of uh, you know annual returns are you able to uh, consistently deliver over the last five years? Uh, the person asking is a newbie and he wonders what is uh, realistically achievable. So I think it all depends, but I think he would be the best person to answer. So I think I think that that's a great question, and and that's a question that that's often asked. And I think a more important question is, is what are your objectives? Um, and what are the reasons, you know, if we look at the last five years, if you look at the performance, at least of the US stock market, it's been on a prolific bull run. I mean, well beyond, um, on, beyond norms. So if you're trying to trade short, with it, if you've got a portfolio that's 50% short, when you're trading um, that environment, that can be somewhat challenging. So in terms of my objective, what I try to achieve is I try to approach the performance of the S&P 500, but actually reduce the, the volatility, significantly reduce the drawdown that's experienced. So I think if you were to look at the returns from the S&P 500, that would be a good proxy for how I'm performing. But uh, with significantly less drawdown. I hope that answers your question. Uh, if there is any, you can always ask back. Uh, would you suggest the EPAC course for those who don't have any programming background whatsoever? How much value would this course add for the person who doesn't even know the most basics of the programming language? So I think I've had I've had this conversation um, with EPAT um, earlier, uh, and one thing I'd recognise is that 
EPAT provide a significant amount of um, material uh, to allow you to become more conversant with Python in advance of, of, of starting the program. And the program is very much focused around Python. So if you can't if you can't program in Python, then you're I, I would suggest you're not going to get the full benefit from the course. Um, I think my issue was I didn't give sufficient attention to the advanced material that was provided. So as I mentioned, the learning curve I was dragged kicking and screaming up that learning curve. So I think if you want to get you know the most from the the, the program, um, being semi proficient uh, in Python would be a great benefit a great foundation um, but if you don't it can certainly be done but it will be more more challenging that was my personal experience thank you for sharing that mark and i know you are wanting to hear from the students perspective but uh, uh, recently uh, you know mark is from batch 42 and uh, very recently we have started with uh, preparatory sessions. I just want to also inform you, Mark, that we have started with uh, Python preparatory sessions, which uh, are before the uh, actual orientation, even the, before the orientation session. Plus, we have added four tutorials also on uh, for those who are not, uh, who want to, uh, you know, have additional learning experience. You have additional Q and A's. Uh, there's a, uh, we have started with the additional tutorials which happen after the python sessions immediately after that particular session so that is what we have added but yes uh, uh, that's what i wanted to just add to that okay yeah that that's uh, great to hear and i think i think the um the participants will find that in you know, exceedingly helpful at least those with with no prior experience right right and also these sessions are available for lifetime and uh, mark also if uh, you are not aware you also get uh, the life, uh, the most recent uh, lecture recordings uh, from the latest batch on added to your alumni portal. Okay, that's also just I wanted to just add one point in that also. Go to the next question now. In the context of trading, can you please drop some light on uh, Monte Carlo simulation and? Uh, Brownian motion. If you want to answer that, it I, I certainly use Monte Carlo simulation um, as part of my decision making job and decision tree uh, as part of my day to day job. But in terms of trading, I've I've not actually used Monte Carlo simulation. Um, so that that's probably not 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 an area I'm probably well positioned to comment on. <clears throat> As it relates to trading. Okay, okay, no problem. Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Uh, what was your objective for switching from TradeStation to uh, Interactive Brokers, and did you achieve those objectives? Uh, which all markets do you trade or plan to trade in the future via Interactive Brokers? So, so uh, I'd mentioned it at the start of the the presentation. TradeStation. Um, TradeStation actually does provide an interface um, where you can trade TradeStation strategies um, and link in and execute them via interactive brokers. But for some reason, and it must be a regulatory, um, uh, some regulatory driver, you can't actually access that cap capability if you're living in the US. If you're in the UK or in other locations, you can actually do that. So from my perspective, um, you know, I, I could only using TradeStation, I could only access uh, the US markets. Now, one of the things I like about trading both long and short portfolios is they give you some level of diversity um, and they allow you to attempt to smooth the equity curve. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm just as an aside, I'm also a resident of the UK and Canada. Um, and sort of invest there as well and, and see myself sort of ultimately um, living in those locations. So the FX is also an important risk to me is being overly exposed to the US dollar. So being able to sort of have portfolios of um, let's say Australian, European, Indian, uh, UK stocks, 
having portfolios set up to trade those um, give me uh, because they're they are correlated with the U.S. markets, but 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 less though less so than within the the, the stocks within the the U.S. portfolios. So that gives me um, additional opportunity to diversify, and it also removes some of the currency risk as well. So that really was the the, the driver be, be behind moving away from um, or it sort of creating an, an, an adjunct to TradeStation where I could sort of expand the portfolios and mitigate some of the FS, FX risk. I'll carry on using TradeStation because it's a fantastic tool, but, 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 but Interactive Oat Brokers gives me that more global reach. Okay. okay. Thank you very much for sharing. A few of the people from the audiences have appreciated your wonderful presentation and uh, mentioned good things here. So thank you very much, Mark. Uh, how long did it take you to migrate from TradeStation to an operational framework? And what recommendations would you give to someone who wants to do the same? To, to do the project and set up the framework, um, similar to Bala, didn't take much more than a month. As I mentioned, the it depends on how you trade and what you want to code. Um, my trade management rules are fairly complex. Um, they use staged exits, um, trailing stops, maybe market regime change switches. So, as I mentioned in TradeStation, there's functions that you can you can use to to trade that uh, or to sort of set that up which is quite nice. Within Python, um, it becomes a lot more complex. And, and as I said, I found that, you know, replicating the TradeStation code um, took a, a, around a thousand, uh, to, to replicate the TradeStation trade management rules took about a thousand lines of code. Um, and, and again, I was it was during the period where, you know, I was gaining uh, proficiency with Python. So, uh, I was hitting a lot of dead ends, uh, but it probably took me about uh, probably about four months to 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 get it working. Um, but but I also looked upon that as an opportunity to learn as well um, and expand my my coding capability. Uh, but that was a fairly sophisticated suite of trade management rules that, as I say, took thousand lines of of code. If you were looking at just sort of you know sort of similar to what I presented, the Bollinger Band strategy, that would be very easy to code um, and, and probably wouldn't take many lines of, of code at all. So. Great. That's, that's, that's good. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Uh, can we take one more question, Mark? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, what resources did you use to overcome the barrier of Python? I, I certainly the the EPAT material um, is very relevant. So you know the fact that they offer up trading strategies um, that you can sort of take, and they give you the code for those trading strategies. You can take those and and then play with them and adjust them, get familiar with them. Um, you know that that that's a great resource. Uh, it certainly didn't address all the trade management issues that 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 I was facing. Uh, so you know that's that that requires reaching out onto the internet. And one of the things you know I think it, w w once you once you face um, you know sort of barrier after barrier, one thing you find is that you know the internet can pretty much answer any question that you actually have and offer you the coding solution um, for any question you may have. So Stack Overflow, um, general internet, you know, sort of Python sites uh, should be able to, you know, offer, uh, be able to sort of provide guidance and resolution to any of the issues that you find. Now, one of the things I do find is that, and it may, maybe it's a version control or, or um, other issue, but it, you, te you tend to have to maybe try three or four uh, three or four solutions before you get something that works. Um, but certainly I found the internet invaluable when it comes to um, when you hit a barrier 
finding out how to uh, j just just cut and paste the uh, um, the error message into the into your your browser, and uh, that will send you in the right direction. It absolutely, internet is an absolutely amazing resources uh, resource, and uh, you get all your queries, everything. Uh, you know, any other question also you have, you just put it on, and you get the answer. I just want to add one more thing, is that we uh, the faculty uh, or the content team at Quantity have also uh, 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 has written a book on. It's available online on Python for trading which you can freely download to understand what are the basic requirements for uh, for knowing Python for trading. So it's not a book to learn Python language, but uh, uh, important uh, aspects and important uh, library packages, functions that you would be using in trading. Okay, so that book is also available freely, just adding to that uh, answer of yours. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mark and uh, Pala, for such a wonderful session today. Uh, we really appreciate you coming forward and taking uh, time out for the session for us and for the listeners. I'm sure all of uh, all of you must have benefited a lot uh, here. So, for more information, uh, you can always for more information on the projects, with you can always. Uh, go to our website, uh, blogs.quantity.com slash tag EPAD trading projects. Okay, you will be able to see numerous projects on our website. If you want to take inspiration from them, you can definitely do that. There is another great uh, place where you can look out if you want to look out for people who are like you. For example, you are a doctor and you want to. Uh, come into trading you are into government services you want to come into trading you are in college and you want to come into trading all of these success stories are uh, available with us you may want to you may be uh, you, it would quite quite be uh, relational to what you are doing currently and you can always uh, do that if you have any queries any questions that still remain unanswered you want to ask you can reach out to contact at quantinsty.com and we'll be happy to provide you any uh, answer that uh, any answer any resolution any solution for your query okay uh, special thanks to the uh, mark and uh, again special thanks to mark and uh, bala for coming forward and taking this session it was really wonderful uh, to take the session listen there were some very great questions that were asked thank you very much for joining in uh, everyone and uh, have a great uh, day ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye.